calling tonight's game two, Devils and the Rangers at the Garden from uh, NBC Sports Network. He is Doc Emmerich. Mike, how are you? I'm doing well, and your Kings are doing magnificently. Yeah, but uh, you sort of looked at me like I was crazy a couple of weeks ago when I talked about my Kings. I don't know if it was about that or it was just any subject you came up with in general. <laughs> I looked at you like you were crazy. That's the fascinating part of being on a show with you. Are you guys going to shoot foul shots this morning in there or what? Uh, we've been shooting uh, for a little while. Also, we have the golf simulator fired up here. So, you know, the man cave is in full bloom right now. Good. Is Jr. in there? No. I hope he doesn't become too emotional about the goal net that you have. When uh, Ronick was in here, and you've been around him, Doc, he he's crazy. <laughs> you think? Yes. He. I. I can't imagine what he was like as a player. I remember him, but I. I. You know, being around Ronick, he's crazy. I remember the best advice he ever gave me. I wasn't a golfer, but he said, "If you're playing golf out in the desert near Phoenix." And their ball goes into the rough. If it is in June, July, August, or September, be very careful because the snakes don't hibernate until later on. <laughs> See, if that's the kind of advice you can't pay for. Where are you right now? I'm inside the garden. I'm in one of the old section of blue seats that hasn't been renovated yet, uh, watching the, uh, the, the tail end of the Rangers practice. Most of the regulars are off the ice now. It's just the assistant coaches and the scratches. Kim, as far as ambiance goes in all the different arenas that you've been in, if you were going to pick your top two, uh, what, which ones would you single out? Boston Garden, Chicago Stadium. Those would be my favorite, too, and they're parking lots now. But they, they really had a special feel about them. This place does, too, but it's still around, and I think we probably you know, treat more of our memory. We, we, uh, we filled it out any difficult experiences in, in, in the cramped seat locations and everything in those old places just because they were so magical to be in. They had their own atmosphere. When you're calling uh, tonight's game, as far as preparing for this, prepare differently for playoff than you would regular season? No, it's a lot the same. The only difference is a lot of the material that you prepare for the first game will carry over into the second, and especially with a three-man show. Uh, you, you don't need to get extra things in as much because there are other people sharing it with you. And a lot of the stories that you get before the first game will still be available in the second and third for you to do if, in fact, you have time. But you know how television goes. If it's not a conversation or replay, it's commercials. And so... You don't worry about that. You just trust you're going to have good games. And, boy, we ever had a ton of them this year. What's the first thing to go on uh, a play-by-play -play guy? The first thing? Yeah. I don't know. You know, I haven't thought about that. That's a good question, though. I don't know. Maybe, you know, I, I, I used to listen to Paul Harvey, the newscaster, and he still had his voice pretty strong until he was 90 years old. So maybe, maybe that's not the first thing to go. I don't know if it's visual acuity or if it's uh, or what it might be. Good question, though. I have to think about it. I don't. I always thought it was excitement, and that's why I always marveled. Uh, Dick Enberg still had excitement when he was calling NFL games. Now he's calling Padre games, but you have that. Chris Berman still doing highlights. You 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 have that enthusiasm, and I think sometimes Brent Musburger, classic example. Brent's calling games probably with more excitement than he did, you know, 10 years ago. So I, I, I always wonder if that's the first thing to go or if it's your, uh, your eyesight. I don't know. Those are the first things that came to mind. Yeah. You know, they put us a good distance away in some of these facilities, so maybe it's more measurable that way. But, um, you know, we're, we're really lucky. We're kind of – I was once referred to as the ideal toy company of life. I mean, we get in free. We get a good seat for the game. We get to work with the best athletes in the world. And after about 10 years, I realized there was something coming in the mail twice a month, too. <laughs> and those are all good things. I, I encourage young people to get into it, not necessarily to take my job, but because it really is a lot of fun, and it's a terrific way to make a living. He's and I just I love the sport. I have ever since I saw my first game in Fort Wayne, Indiana in 1960. And to get in free and get to watch the best athletes play a game of meaning is really special for me he's mike emmerich nbc sports calling tonight's devils rangers game two at the garden uh play-by-play -play guys that you admired growing up or that you can still take something from today jack quinlan was the radio announcer for the cubs during a time that they were awful jack was killed in an automobile accident at a very young age i liked him because he was entertaining and he was enthusiastic about a Cubs team that was fighting the Pirates for last place in the National League every year. 
Um, I think in terms of hockey, Bob Chase is the guy that I grew up listening to in Fort Wayne, Indiana. He's 86. He's going to be doing his 60th season of Fort Wayne Comics games next fall. Uh, Danny Gallivan and, and probably Gene Hart. Those are I, I, the fact that I know Dick Enberg is very important to me because I, he was a guy from a small town in Michigan, and I was a guy from a small town in Indiana. And I guess he showed me that if you could get a good shot to do major league sports coming from a small town, it wasn't the most unusual thing in the world. Preview tonight's game two with what you saw in game one between Devils Rangers. If I were either coach, I wouldn't change a thing. I think both teams played the way that they can to win. The Devils did the first two periods, and the Rangers did the third. And if both of them play the way they did in separate parts of game one all night long, then we're going to have a battle royal in terms of attack and resistance. It'll either be a high-scoring game like 4-3, to three, or it'll be nothing-nothing or 1-1 one, one maybe late in the third. Because the Rangers are a defensive team. They never give up more than three, it seems like. And the Devils are pretty impressive offensively. They are not your grandmother's Devils or maybe even your sister's Devils that used to just uh, lay back at center ice and wait for you to come and then shut you down. Now they go in and they go right after you. And that makes them a lot more fun to watch, for one thing. But the Rangers, I don't think there's a better defensive team left in the playoffs other than a certain team in Southern California. Are my Kings the team to beat? Yes. Because they've got it both. They've got the goaltending and defense, and they score four or five or three or four. That's just that's the combination of their second-round sweep of St. Louis. And they got four again last night on the road in Phoenix against the team that really prides itself on team defense. Yeah, they're getting it. They've got scoring depth. They've got it all, and I like their chance. If Quick played in New York, would we be hailing him the way we do Lundquist? Yes. And all it takes is for them to be seen in the heaviest spotlight of all, and that's the Stanley Cup final. And so he's being hailed in Southern California now. If this performance continues through the final and in a parade down whatever street you choose in Los Angeles, then he'll be hailed nationally. But he's, he's got to be the odds-on guy, along with Jimmy Howard perhaps, to be the goaltender in the Olympic team in, um, in Russia if, in fact, the NHL players go. Doc, have fun tonight. I know you will, but uh, thank you for uh, what you bring to the game, the enthusiasm. Uh, it's a treat to be able to be uh, in front of my TV listening to you. Thank you. Are we going to see you soon, sir? Uh, I Yeah, you might see me sooner than later. Do you realize how insufferable I'm going to be, Doc, if the Kings win the uh, Cup? I'll look forward to it. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. We'll march past the past city. We'll go past City Hall, and you'll probably be in the parade if they have one. And we'll see the, uh, that, that insignia that growing up in Indiana, I only saw on Jack Webb's badge on Dragnet. Well, here's the thing. I just don't want it to be like Vancouver, where we had to flee the city when it was on yeah. fire last year. So, You're right. I, yeah. right. We won't give the Kings the championship yet. But we'll let them earn it. But they've been very impressed. If you can go five weeks and lose only one hockey game, you're pretty good. Thank you, Doc. Okay, take care. All right, Mike Emmerich, NBC Sports. He'll call tonight's game, too. Rangers and the Devils.